a good night's sleep. Um, we all benefit from a good night's sleep. And it was quite interesting. Once again, this week, I had a listen to a, a session um, on Vanessa Feld was talking about that actually we all do need to have, make sure we have good sleep. Sleep is important for many reasons. It's important for our mental health and well-being. It's also important for our um, community. We know that people who have poor sleep patterns or poor quality of sleep, their immune system may be slightly affected. But of course, remember, as we get older, we don't need as much sleep as we did as younger. And lots of people report that actually they're worried they're no longer sleeping as much as they used to and, and perhaps struggling. Of course, if you're having a night's sleep and feeling unrefreshed, then that's slightly different to uh, a night's sleep and being able to tolerate. Um, and there's lots of information out there about how people can improve their quality of sleep. Um, we know that arthritis, um, especially AS, will contribute to problems with sleeping, mainly because of pain and discomfort. And it may be worthwhile, once again, looking at um, the position you're in bed. Are you needing to use something like a long hot water bottle to help you get comfortable? If you're finding you're in, and you're not sleeping well overnight, look at your sleep patterns during the course of the day. Are you excessively napping? Look at the environment you're in. So is the room too noisy? Is it too warm, too cold? Is it too bright? Um, one of my neighbors is really funny. They've just put some um, lights in their garden and my bedroom is just like being in a night disco some nights, the flashing lights and the bright lights. And it really does affect my sleep. I need a dark room, I need a dark, cool room to fall asleep. If you've got restless leg syndrome, once again, the NHS webpage has some really good tips about managing restless leg syndrome. But it's important that if you are struggling and your sleep is to be disturbed by this, that you have a conversation with your GP. Looking at your bed and your pillow is important. Um, and once again, is it new um, and therefore a bit more too firm, too soft, or is it new to you? So if you're staying with family, friends, in hotels, on holidays, camp, um, in caravans, then you may find that different beds do affect your AS because you can't get as comfortable. There are other things that may disturb your sleep, such as alcohol, caffeine, nicotine, recreational drugs, um, which hopefully not too many of our patients are using. If you've been doing a lot of traveling or traveling abroad and using airplanes nowadays, the jet lag, which will affect your sleep, trying to get back into a normal rhythm um, with the changes in time. And I've really struggled over the last few weeks moving with the summer and winter time changes in the clock. It takes me about two to three weeks to get back into a, a good sleep pattern. If you're doing a lot of different shifts that will affect your sleep. So if you're doing nights, days, evenings, weekends, once again, it may affect the quality of all your sleep patterns, which once again can exacerbate some of the symptoms of um, uh, fibromyalgia, which may be an overlap. And don't forget, if, as we get older, we do need to go up to the toilet, perhaps in the night, maybe once or twice. And lots of people stop drinking, um, stop drinking and um, perhaps a cup of tea in the evening or even water in the evening for the fear it disturbs their sleep. If you are having nighttime um, urination frequency of going to the toilet, then once again, reassess that perhaps with a healthcare professional because there are medications that can help irritable bladders um, maybe overnight. Um, there are things that talk about sleep deprivation. Um, there's a really good web page which looks at your sleep deprivation and some tips on identifying. So things like if you need an alarm clock to wake you up, um, do you rely on the snooze button to give yourself extra sleep? Do you find it difficult to get out of bed in the morning, not for your joint stiffness or your spinal stiffness, but generally the motivation to get out of bed in the morning? Do you feel sluggish in the afternoons? Um, through to do you nap regularly through the day. So do look at your sleep and also the day um, or the morning when you get up, what do you feel like and also how much you're napping during the course of the day. Um, napping has been in and out of vogue for many times. And I remember when I first did rheumatology, um, we were encouraging patients not to nap, but actually there is some benefit or for short nap periods. So maybe not more than 30 minutes can give you a boost in your mood, your general well-being, your creative creativity, but very much 
don't let that napping um, exceed perhaps 30 minutes. Um, recently, we've been talking to a lady. She actually sleeps 16 hours a day. That's not natural. Um, and it's probably there's some kind of sleep deprivation. So do look at your sleep patterns because that may be a key to improving your general quality of life. Um, remember the bedroom is what it's used for. Um, it's not a place to work. If you're definitely at the moment still working from the home, perhaps not sitting on the bed with a, an iPad or a, a laptop is good. It's not good for your position. But also it's about getting using the bedroom for sleep and relationship rather than the whole family sharing a bed and you can't get a good quality sleep. And it's really funny talking to lots of patients about um, dogs. My parents would never let me have our dogs in the bedroom. But today my dog sleeps with me, but very much disturbs my quality of sleep. But there are other people talking about how their cats sleep on their heads or um, they have to position themselves in a position to allow the cat or the dog to be um, comfortable rather than themselves. Do talk to a healthcare professional if you see your sleep is being disturbed. Do look at, um, this is not always um, down to things like noise and it may be other physical or mental health issues that are affecting your sleep. Keep to routines, try not to do um, going to bed too early, too late, different nights because our bodies do rely on a body biological clock, which is about understanding that the body gets into a pattern. It's a bit the same as eating and drinking. If we don't have food at certain times of the day, when we would normally have it, our tummies start to rumble. And that's the same sort of um, process that the body has in laying sleep. It likes to go to bed at the same time at night and it likes to get up at the same time of the day. Keep your regular exercising. Um, try to not do it vigorous exercise before you go to bed at night, but actually maintaining a good exercise program is important. Look at what you're eating and drinking before you go to bed. Caffeine, very much review the amount of caffeine you're doing in your day. It's surprising how much, when you write down how much caffeinated um, drinks you have during the day, and this could be a contributing factor. Now, lots of people going cold turkey from having regular caffeine in all their drinks to no caffeine is not easy. But actually just perhaps if you have drink six cups of coffee a day or tea a day, which are caffeinated, perhaps drop it down to five cups of tea or coffee that caffeinated and one that's not gone decaffeinated and gradually bring yourself down. I know that if I go to decaffeinated foods or drinks too quickly, I get really, really bad headaches. So you have to manage that caffeine um, reduction over a period of time. Lots of people think, talk about alcohol improving quality of sleep. The research would suggest it probably isn't that good or does, definitely doesn't improve quality of sleep. And if you are a, a heavy snorer and uh, where you start to block your upper airways because of your tongue and um, things like that, um, alcohol seems to contribute to that. So definitely look at the amount of alcohol you're drinking before the course of the day. If you are finding that life is stressful, there is so much out there nowadays. And I will once again, there's some new web pages that I found that I will share with um, Zeri about understanding stress within families, within your work, within yourself, and how to manage that stress. Because that's key. If you're not sleeping because you're stressed um, during the course of the day and in the evening, your mind's racing, it may um, disturb your sleep. As we've talked before about keeping your bedroom in the environment that's Good for you. Some people like a warm bedroom, some people like a cold bedroom. Someone like a bit of noise, someone likes a quiet bedroom. Um, some people, when you talk about quietness, some people find it really relaxing to have the white noise sound. So things like rain, wind, thunderstorms all help in, in allow them to drift off into a good quality of sleep. Look at bedtime relaxation routines. Try to avoid things like a PC or a laptop before you go to bed or even an iPad. They give off this blue light, which is thought to or disturb quality of sleep. Um, so do look at that. It stimulates the brain um, not to want to calm down. Perhaps look at some relaxation techniques to prepare for sleep. If you wake up in the night and you're worried about something, the really hard thing is, is if you carry on worrying about it, you will um, find it difficult to sleep. And a tip that's always talked about is just putting a, a notepad beside your bed, 
write down what you're worried about and then hopefully that will postpone you worrying about it until the next day when you're you can put the, the energy and concentration into what you need to sort out. Some good sleep tips. Um, if you're worried about your quality of sleep, once again, there are some apps out there that you can use. You can put them under your pillar um, and they will track your sleep and they will determine, I'll let you know visually how your sleep is. There are also some apps that if you struggle to um, do breathing exercises, that you can actually project this image onto the ceiling in your bedroom and it allows you to focus on the image which with this in this case it was like a circle and you um, breathe in relation to the circle um, becoming smaller and enlarging, deep in breathing in and breathing out. Um, I learned on the Gadget Show this week, there's a, a new sleep pillow. This um, has numerous factors. It can monitor your sleep, but also it can give those white sound um, noises through the pillow, which may help improve quality of sleep. There's a whole raft of pillows that are differently designed. So if you've got a normal feather or foam pillow in the old traditional um, oblong style, you may find that actually adapting or moving to some specific design pillows may help. And then you can see the picture of the lady there. If you get shoulder pain, sometimes it's just because your shoulder can't get into good position and having a specially designed pillow or adaptive pillow is helpful. And then of course, the bed itself is really important. Um, partners may like a cooler bed or a warmer bed to you. But it's really difficult because you find that you end up spending all the night moving the duvet on or off yourself or on and off your partner. But today there are many devices. There are these new ones which allow the bed to be, um, the te bed temperature to be to be adapted to your partners and your preference. And if you're um, finding you're having hot flushes or you find it really difficult because the bed gets too hot, there are even newer um, devices that can actually pump cool um, air into the bed to cool you down. 